ESPN Sports Radio 1300, welcoming you to the Lexington Legends Inside Scoop. Keeping you updated on the news and happenings of your Lexington Legends. We'll talk to the players, coaches, and personalities that make the Lexington Legends one of the premier minor league teams in the country. This is the Lexington Legends Inside Scoop. And now, the man who calls the action, play-by-play voice of the Lexington Legends, Keith Elkins. Brian Buchanan is with us. He's the Lexington Legends manager for 2013 as the Legends uh, make the move to the Kansas City Royals organization. And uh, Brian, of course, is uh, better known as Buck uh, throughout baseball and in in the Kansas City organization. So we'll say welcome to Buck and uh, good to have you with us. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited about this year. I think we're going to have a uh, pretty talented team, so it's going to be fun to to get into a new spot and and, uh, learn the area and baseball so yeah this is uh, of course a change for everybody uh, here in lexington this year as uh, things have gotten off to an exciting start with uh, uh, the legends and their association with the uh, kansas city royals and uh, we are looking forward to 2013 and uh, of course uh, one of the reasons is that uh, teams like to get off to a good start when they make a move such as this and there's some good talent in the kansas city system i think there probably are a lot of good reasons to be optimistic about this 2013 season for the legends aren't there Oh, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the things, a lot of the players will be um, a mix of Idaho Falls and, and Burlington, and, and both those clubs last year had some real good talent on it. And you know, the Burlington record and what they did uh, in that league speaks for itself. And um, you know, there might be some a few guys returning from you know the Kane County team that'll that may have to repeat. But um, you know, from the guys that we have to to pick from that are, that are going to be in that, at, at that level, um, you know, top to bottom. There's some pretty good prospects on the team. And, you know, on paper, it's, uh, from what they did last year, it's going to be a good club. It's just, you know, you hear that all the time. On paper, they're good, but you got to go out and, you know, baseball is a funny sport, so you got to go out and perform and, and uh, do what you need to do to win a game. So. And, of course, one of the challenges they'll face, a lot of the guys coming up will be playing their first 140-game uh, season and uh, talking to the players coming through here the last several years. Uh, that's a, a big challenge in itself and one for you as a manager to make sure everybody's uh, ready to go and uh, and uh, ready to go 140 games because it is quite a difference coming from the short season, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I, uh, last year was my first year managing a full-season team. and um, You know, as a player, I did it all the time, and, you know, you kind of get used to it, but it's a little different as a manager, and it's a little different for guys that have just, you know, it's their first first time in a full season team, and it's a grind, especially with, you know, the, the bus trips in the Midwest League weren't weren't all that bad. I mean, I think our furthest one was four hours or something like that, and mm-hmm. you know, we played yep. the other division. We had an eight hour trip, but you know, we did it on our day off, and I, I believe the you know the Saudi League is a little bit. Travels a little longer on the buses, so that's going to be a challenge for the for the guys. But you know, it's all part of the process. It's all part of the you know the minor leagues. It'll quote unquote build character, right? Right. <laughs> we we hope so. And there will be some long trips in the South Atlantic League, no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, coming from uh, short season to full season last year. Now this season coming up will be uh, your fourth as a manager in the Kansas City organization, one with uh, Idaho Falls, as you mentioned, in the Pioneer League, and, and two with Kane County in the Midwest. Uh, at that time that was the uh, uh, Royals affiliate at this level, the Class A level. And when did you start thinking seriously about uh, about being a manager? Guys come to the end of their playing careers and they go in all kinds of different directions. Some want to stay right. in baseball, but it's quite a commitment. Uh, when did that ha- start happening for you? Well, I played in Japan. I played in Japan in '07, um, and I came back and and you know I signed with the Royals and you know '08, '09. I played in AAA with them. Mm-hmm. And I was really doing that to try and get back overseas, and you know. It was, um, you know, I wanted to continue to play. I didn't have it out of my system yet. And and uh, after the 09 season, the, the Royals came to me and um, he said, we've got this job open for you if you want it to, you know, manage at Idaho Falls. And, you know, I was getting towards the end of my career and I, you know, I just didn't, I didn't really have the desire to play anymore, which is, which was, I needed to get those, that, that out of my system before I moved on. And, and I did that with, with the Royals at AAA and, and I went to uh, instructional league right before, right before
right before I retired, and they said, why don't you come and sit on some of the meetings and, and um, you know, see how it goes, see how you like it. So I, you know, went there for about a week, and I knew as soon as I went out on the field and I was watching everyone stretch and get loose at 7.30 in the morning, I was like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, uh, I can't do that anymore. So um, that's, that's when I started, you know, they offered me a job, and I took it, and uh, it's, it's been it's just fun. I have a blast with it. I enjoy managing. I enjoy teaching the teaching the game the right way and and uh, watching guys improve. And there are different aspects to the minor league manager's job, uh, particularly working with these uh, these very young players, because uh, not only are you teaching them the the game itself, but also just how to how to be professionals and how to. I mean, you have to deal with things. Uh, they're they're out on their own for the first time, and while you may not be uh, involved every day in, in maybe something uh, personal involving them, but at the same time, you're watching them grow as people as well, and and uh, that adds another aspect to the the minor league manager's uh, assignment, doesn't it? It does. It's you got to be on top of some things. Um, you know, the can we're, we're fortunate with the Kansas City Royals. They've got um, a real solid core from top to bottom. I mean, the, the, the guys on the team I've managed for three years, and I haven't had, um, you know, I haven't had maybe one incident where I had to, um, you know, discipline a kid or or something. So I, I think it goes to what you know the Royals are all about. They first and foremost they want to develop young men to go out in the world and, and succeed after baseball. And, you know, they're using baseball as a platform to, you know, be able to teach them the real world things as, as, as well as going out and, and uh, playing the game of baseball the correct way. So, um, you know, that's a credit to the Royal system. That's one of the reasons why, I, uh, you know, I enjoy, enjoy the Royal so much because that they really are from, from Dayton all the way to, you know, you know down, they, they really emphasize on character building and, and uh, I enjoyed teaching the kids how to, you know, I've had some experience in baseball from playing and living on my own and doing all that stuff. But, that, uh, you know, they can ask me questions. I can, you know, kind of guide them in the right direction, as do all the managers. And, the, you know, A-ball managers, it's, it's a tough gig. you got a lot of, a lot of you know, 18- to 21-year-olds that uh, don't know anything but baseball. So um, it, it can be exciting at times. Mm-hmm. Right, in many different ways, right? Yep. We're talking with uh, Brian Buchanan. He's the uh, manager of the Lexington Legends for 2013 as the Legends make their debut as uh, Kansas City Royals affiliate. And you mentioned your own experience. Of course, uh, Brian Buchanan was a, a major league ball player and played uh, with the uh, Minnesota Twins, San Diego Padres, uh, the New York Mets, and uh, got about seven years in in, in the big leagues. And uh, you can answer the questions with first-hand experience when uh, the ball players ask you, what does it take to get there? And I'm sure you get that question from them now and then. What's uh, generally your response when uh, when a player asks you about uh, what he needs to do to get to the big leagues? Well, you, you, you got to, obviously hard work is, is the biggest thing. You've got to, you know, you've got to be patient a little bit. You can't, baseball such a long, long season that you, there's, there's highs, there's lows, there's, there's in-betweens and uh, for me, I think an even kill is the way to, you know, to, to grind through the season and, and put up numbers where you can move to the next level or, or get noticed by other clubs or what have you. But uh, being in a, in a first, these kids, the first, you know, season of, you know, 140, 142 games, whatever it is, is, is you know, it's, it, it, come July and August, it's going to hit them right in the hit them right in the face, and they're going to be like, you're right, this is a this is a long season, so you got to take care of your bodies. Um, you know, get some rest. You got to eat eat properly. There's a lot of things that go into um, getting to the big leagues. But um, obviously, like, everyone's got the talent, or they wouldn't, you know, have on a uniform. So it's just a, a matter of applying what you can do on on the field. It's sort of a combination of things too. And I talk to the guys. Obviously, they're all they're all having fun in the sense that uh, baseball is their job. And uh, of course, some guys are high draft picks. As you were a first round pick back in 1994, and other guys are are signed on, knowing that their chances are pretty slim of of climbing the ladder extensively. But at the same time. Uh, everybody can enjoy the experience of having baseball be their job. You have to get used to handling it the right way, but there's still a lot of element of fun to the game at that level too, isn't there? It is. It's uh, it's, it's for me at least. It's very enjoyable to watch the the young kids go out and you know you harp on them about doing something right, doing something right, doing something right, doing it this way, doing it this way, doing it this way, and then they finally do it. I mean, it's and they keep doing it and keep doing it. It's 
you know, it's exciting to see guys grow as a as a as a player and a and a, and a team that that uh, you know enables you to, to move up through systems or you know, and we would want we want every kid on the team to play for the Royals, but most likely the you know, the odds are that some are going to get released, some are going to get traded. So you really got to go out and uh, you know just work hard and, and and play the game the right way. I wanted to ask you, of course, uh, baseball people have very limited time off, and this is the time of year usually when you can get a little bit of time away from the game. But what do you like to do when you're uh, at home or, or when uh, when it's the off season for you? I've got four boys, so uh, that's that's what I do in the off season. i got an that's, eight, a six, a four, and a two-year-old. That's a pretty full calendar right there. So that's uh, that's my off season right there in a nutshell. <laughs> well, that's a, a great way to, to stay busy and enjoy the off season with your family. And uh, I know you've got an event uh, that you'll be with us for in uh, January here in Lexington. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. And of course, uh, spring training will be right around the corner after that point. Yep, I'm looking forward to getting out there and uh, checking out the city a little bit. So. Well, we appreciate you being with us today and taking time to be on the Inside Scoop. Brian Buchanan, the Legends manager for 2013, has been with us. And uh, Buck, thanks a lot. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll be right back on Inside Scoop. Ben Revere is with us on Inside Scoop, uh, the former Lexington Catholic star who was a first-round pick of the Minnesota Twins back in 2007 and reached the major leagues with the Twins in 2010. But back in the news this week, a change of scenery for Ben in uh, 2013 as he'll be joining the Philadelphia Phillies after a trade that uh, came out during the winter meetings. First of all, Ben, good to have you with us. How you doing? Glad to be on here. Well, we're glad to have you as well, and uh, wanted to ask you, of course, about the the trade that uh, came about this uh, past week, Minnesota to Philadelphia for you, and uh, it's one phone call just sort of changes everything for a ball player. Sometimes, tell me about how how all that transpired from your point of view. Well, you know, it's just um, it kind of shocked me a little bit, just um, the fact the whole off season, you know, you know the Twins and the pitching and everything, and um, so I thought it was either going to be between me and Denard. Mm-hmm. So you see the NAR gets traded to the Nationals, so everybody was like, okay, you're the center fielder. You know, so then boom, like, it just popped down uh, out surprised, and I was just like, wow, like, I didn't see this coming. So, but it's just uh, it's a great opportunity, you know, going to a team, uh, you know, to the people, world championship and everything. Um, you know, they got, uh, I play against their organization, all the minor leagues and everything. I know a couple guys on the team, but, you know, um, talk to the GM, Tony Manuel, all the guys in the front office, they're really, really nice, brought me in, open arms. So it's just um, one type of deal. So I'm you know, changing new scenery, but um, you know, they, they are very welcoming me in there right now. Right, a trade is certainly a shock to a player, but at the same time, you know that the the other club has you uh, in their plans very definitely. And uh, when you uh, look at the Phillies website now, you see your, your picture there for uh, – uh, the number one spot in, in center field, and looks like that's uh, where they have you slated. Uh, I'm Ruben Amaro, Jr., the GM, called you an outstanding young center fielder who fits nicely with our club, and uh, that's uh, just about as good a circumstance as you can have starting into uh, a time with a new ball club, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they just – I've been playing against them last year, and uh, and uh, I had pretty good series, but it was just, um, you know – they got so many powers, uh, power guys in the lineup. You know, the main thing was to see uh, I'm a type of guy. You know, it's just you know, he just gets on so base score runs, and those guys are knock me in. So, and all the Philly fans know that. And, uh, that's why they want me in top of the order. Just with my speed right now, it's just you know I could get on by like a little you know base hit or by like an air or something. I get on and I probably score just because we got so many weapons in this lineup and um, and. That's like really pretty science to be a part of. I mean, it's just because like with Minnesota Twins, you know, I had that. So, you know, coming from that to this now, it's just even more, even more exciting. But um, no, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's just, um, it's just a blessing. You know, there's a I just gotta thank God every day. It's just give me a chance as a young age to be in this organization. This soon, because normally you know the Phillies have so much money they get any center field they want, but uh, they chose me, so I'm pretty uh. Um, that I could be a part of that. Talking with Ben Revere, a major league outfielder now with the Philadelphia Phillies as a result of the trade made 
uh, just a few days ago, and of course Ben from uh, Lexington Catholic, and worked his way up through the uh, minor league system of the Minnesota Twins before being traded to uh, Philadelphia, where he is slated to be the Phillies center fielder in 2013, and of course uh, everyone hopes for several years beyond that uh, as well. Uh, one of the business aspects of uh, all of the baseball deals that are made these days, Ben, I think Ruben Romero used the word controllable in talking about you, but that's a business term, which I assume refers to your, your contract situation. You wouldn't be eligible for free agency for a while, and and uh, that's just the way things are right now. You got to got to plan for that side of the uh, baseball equation too, and the clubs have to look at that. But that's another reason that seems to make it all a good fit for you. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just uh, right now uh, my agent's talking to the uh, GM uh, about a little uh, short short contract, just you know, make sure I'll be safe. But you know, uh, you know, usually those type of contracts you want to get that to. Uh, you know, you're really, really old in the books. But, I mean, uh, if I just go in there and play my game uh, and with the Phillies and with their fans, I know they're crazy and uh, uh, they know they know the game in baseball. Um, I should go up there and just play my game like I've been playing with the Twins. Uh, I could fit just right in. And, um, you know, with this uh, situation, uh, they see that I come in and I'll just help them, uh, you know, win a like, few more games, make the playoffs, hopefully push into a championship uh you know, it's just uh, they may want me for long uh, for long term. So, but like I ain't think about that right now. The main thing I'm just taking one game at a time, one season at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, just trying to hit the ball club, get back to the world championship. We talked after your uh, call up to the Twins in 2010, and of course for every ball player when he first gets to the major leagues, everybody's a bit uh, wide eyed and trying to fit in and contribute however they can. And now. Uh, after a couple of years, you're an established big leaguer and now a, a key part in a trade to a team that, as you mentioned, expects to be back in contention after what for them was a down year. They finished third in the National League East at 81-81 and 81 and, and uh, 17 games behind uh, the Washington Nationals and 13 behind Atlanta. But that's after the Phillies had won the National League East for five years in a row, and they're certainly uh, yeah. expecting a bounce back. And as you mentioned, the, the fans are going to be playing in front of a full house just about every night. Uh, the, a lot will be expected of you, but uh, – that's that's what you play for, right? Yeah, that's what you play for. Um, you know, Philly and they have, you know, they uh, they come ready to see a ball game. Um, so, uh, I see all on Twitter, you know, all the Philly fans are really excited. Um, you know what I'm saying? That it's, uh, it's going to be a lot different in Minnesota. You know, so that crowds every night, just fans will be rowdying and everything. But um, even some of the players, even some of the players told me that. But, I mean, it's just, uh, I'm really pumped for it. You know, it's just going to a new environment. Be part of that. And, um, you know, the Phillies had some um, some of the key guys kind of uh, struggled this year, kind of hurt. You know, even their um, you know, big boys in the lineup, they were kind of uh, they didn't come back to LA, so you know they really didn't have much. But you know, I think everybody come back healthy and strong. You know, we could push, we could push it, uh, we could make a strong finish. So especially you know with the National making key moves and everything with their pitching staff and you no know, hitters and everything. So. We we're definitely going to get to compete against them. So uh, even my boy Denard. So we've already been talking trash to each other yeah. already. So it's uh, um, one of the deals. Just uh, we got to prepare ourselves for um, and redeem ourselves and just get back to that playoff push. Yeah, new opportunities for you and Denard Span in 2013. You mentioned the the speed, which of course is, has been the key part of your game all along, and uh, had 40 steals last year and just nine caught stealing and 34 out of 43 the year before that. You're already approaching the 100 mark and uh, certainly you can uh, reasonably expect to go well over that in uh, in 2013 it's uh, a milestone that you're you're reaching right away and and certainly that'll be a continued uh, key part of your game for many years to come yeah no um, that's all i gotta do is just you know just keep my own base percentage up just keep uh hopefully keep my field bases high and uh, my runs up my run scoring high um you know with my speed uh that's what uh, the Phillies love to do they love to run even with the small guys, you know, they're they're really a power lineup. But uh, they know uh, now uh, going to the Phillies ballpark, the ball carries a lot. So hopefully I hit my first home run. Uh, mm-hmm. I have, I have uh, I've heard a bunch of Phillies fans say I would. It was kind of tough to hit one in Target because you never know uh-huh. when one is blowing. I hit one. I crushed the ball there, and luckily uh, the direction I crushed it is one's blowing. But um, it's this. Uh, <clears throat> It's it's going to be um, you know, it's going to be a good time. You know, it's just um, you know, I know I want to talk to Charlie Manuel. I'm going up there Thursday. Talk to the GM and Charlie. Just go, just pick my brain. I'll pick their brain, and 
I want to tell him, I'm like, um, hopefully you give me the green light because I'm going to run every time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll get in score position for his guys so it would be easy for him. Or they just hit a home run, but they get base hit to the gap on one score. So try to make them look good. So, uh, But I think uh, when I come in spring training, he's going to give me the green light and everything and just show off my speed a little bit. Your percentage on stolen bases is is very high for a young player, uh, even when you when you first got to the major leagues. And sometimes uh, guys with speed have to learn a little bit more about base stealing to become good at it. But what makes you a good base stealer? In addition to obviously the outstanding speed, which anybody would like to have, but but it has to be more than that. You have to have to know what you're doing out there. Yeah, you do. Uh, you know, you get like they have so many scout reports on you in major league. Just not even funny. Oh no! They give us times. We could like watch film on pitchers. How long? How long they hold the ball when it runs at first or second base or anything? Um, it's just it, you usually get so much a big advantage from the pitchers. And it's like it's pretty crazy. I think that would help me out a lot, uh, uh, a whole ton. But um, just uh, just having that in your grabs, you know, it's gonna help you a lot. But you no, know, Paul Maher there, one of the Twins Hall of Famers. You no, know, he helped me out a lot in minor league to. Um, you know, adjust my base ceiling uh, game a little bit. When I was in Lloyd with Lloyd. After that season, you know, I was getting like 50 stolen bases a year, 40, 50. Um, just getting good jumps. You know, I was just ch- kind of changing my stance and everything, and you know, I kind of adapted to it all the way up to the big leagues. And they told me just keep it the same, just keep doing like that, and then you should be good. And luckily, um, everything's working out for the best. Talking with Ben Revere, the former Lexington Catholic star, involved in a trade last week from the Minnesota Twins to the Philadelphia Phillies, and it looks like uh, he'll be set for center field uh, for the Phillies. And, Ben, I know you have a lot of fun out there in the outfield, and we get to see a lot of highlight plays involving uh, Ben Revere here in just your brief time in the in the major leagues. And uh, fans, I'm sure, enjoy looking at those on video. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll expect to see some more of those in Philadelphia as well because uh, that's that's part of your game as well on the defensive side. Yeah, no, uh, no. Best thing is, like I say, it's just my dad. You no, know, he, he, he told me that if I never, if I come out of a baseball game with no dirt on my uniform <laughs> or no grass stains, uh, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, he's I was the type of guy. You no, know, I was like like to dive all over the place. You know, I was trying to make good plays. You know, I was just impress my dad, or my brother, or something. Just uh. Just trying, just trying to impress. Now, not really to um, no show off, but really, I was younger. Is just you know trying to impress them a little bit, trying to be like my big brother. You know, when he was in high school, college playing center field, and making dive catches. I wanted just exactly like that. But um, you know, it, I guess it just come out of the genes a little bit. You know, my dad did, my brother did. Um, but you no, know, it's just the main thing is the coaches. It really just shows the coaches that you know you go out there, you try to dive for a ball. Or anything that shows that you're not scared and you're willing to sacrifice your body to help help your teammate. And so many coaches will see that and they'll show that so much respect to you, maybe your teammate. And and that's gonna help you like stay in the game for the longest time. I mean, you make all those good plays, that's how you know, that's how you could beat, you know, with a guy who like may may have a good arm but you know, he don't die for balls and the fans you see that and then they get mad, but you see a guy, you know, who has a decent arm. Uh, who make diamond catches just trying to sacrifice the body should help this team win. And that's how the fans and coaches and teammates going to show respect to you just because, just because um, you know, you're willing to help the team out. Talking with Ben Revere, the former Lexington Catholic star, involved in a trade last week uh, from the Minnesota Twins to the Philadelphia Phillies. And as you make this change, Ben, you know you got a, a lot of people in this area that are going to be pulling for you as well as all those uh, Phillies fans. So we, we certainly want to wish you well. Uh, Thanks so much. All right. Thanks for being with us today. Ben Revere has been with us on Inside Scoop, and we'll be right back. You've been listening to the Lexington Legends Inside Scoop. An in-depth look at your Lexington Legends on ESPN Sports Radio 1300, WLXG AM Lexington. Tune in next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock for more inside information on the Lexington Legends with Pete Elkins. We now return you to our regularly scheduled ESPN Sports Radio 1300 programming.